Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Radio Show, only on Financial News and Talk. Now live in studio, your host, local and national real estate expert and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries. As we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, and even poking fun at the rest of the media. This is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take, how your family or business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message. I do deliver it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990 or com. Just remember, that's the number you call anytime for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. While I do have a great team when it comes to developing a financing plan or plan to save you money, I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference. 800-306-1990-800-306-1990. And of course, celebrations of the day. i got to look at some of these things. Boy, they, National Cook for Your Pets Day. Okay, open a bag of science diet. I call that cooking. National Vinegar Day. Yeah, maybe not on, Not so much on that one. I'm not sure that we really want to go to Nat, National Vinegar Day. Holy cow. Ah, then we look down the list further. National Deep Fried Clams Day. Well, we could possibly go with that one. It is what it is. National Brush Day, National Stress Awareness Day. I'm reading all these things and I am getting so stressed. But having beaten anorexia, I will go with National Calzone Day today. Yeah, I like the, uh, love those calzones. How about bring that one into the mix for us? So we'll, we'll stick with the calzone. And checking the markets this morning. Boy, they're interesting watching the markets right now. There's a whole lot going on out there in the, in the market. It's, it's a roller coaster today. It, just today alone, Dow Jones Industrial Average. I'm looking at it. It's up 51 points right now. It was up as much as, oh, it was over 100 points up at one point today. Oil down 18 cents a barrel. And don't forget, here in Taxifornia, we are getting even taxed more starting today. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Yeah, we have that new Democrat plan that increases our gas tax by 12 cents a gallon today. Uh, it, it, it's, it's painful watching what this governor, what this legislature does to the people here. Bill! Yeah, you look, you got to wonder. 12 cents a gallon more in gasoline tax. U.S. 10-year Treasury, 2.36, down almost two basis points today. So we're watching that one for you as well. And then we start looking at some of the news of the day. There's a lot of, lot of news out there today. We're watching, obviously, where our hearts go out to those folks in New York, attacked again yesterday in New York City. What a What a... You know, this, this group, uh, they, they use themselves, they call, they're flying under the flag of ISIS. And maybe we need to fight, start finding some ways to make it more painful for them to create some of these uh, attacks on us. Maybe the more, they, the more they suffer individually, maybe they'll decide that, you know, hey, maybe that isn't such a good idea, driving a truck on a bike path, killing as many people as they can. Unbelievable. 29-year-old killed eight people in Manhattan. And apparently the mosque that he was a member of, and obviously they don't watch the mosques any longer, that's against the rules under Bill de Blasio. You're not allowed to, to go where the crooks are. Isn't that surprising? I mean, why don't you go to the Upper East Side of New York and see if you're going to find terrorists there, as opposed to going to a mosque where they hang out. Now, not everybody at the mosque is a terrorist. I don't want to get, make that, that correlation. But holy cow, go where the crooks are. It's not, it's profiling. Okay, so call it profile. I, don't, I really don't care what you call it as long as you call them captured. That's my whole idea. President Trump 
venting on Twitter this morning, focusing much of his anger on the diversity visa lottery that the suspected terrorist used to enter the country. The president savaged the program, which was begun in 1990, and issues about 50,000 green cards Ow! to immigrants from countries that are underrepresented in America. So that's the new methodology of getting a green card or the new qualification of getting a green card is if you're underrepresented and underrepresented in America, then that qualifies you. And then we look at our lovely Adam Schiff here from Southern California, ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee. Now, wait a second. I want the truth! the truth. House Intelligence Committee? Isn't that an oxymoron? Well, Schiff has never found anything that anybody says other than himself that he likes. So he's contending that the diversity program, not just merit, is a worthy goal when admitting new immigrants into the United States. Well, he's also the one that says that that there's no problem with the collusion of Hillary Clinton and President Obama and Eric Holder and the, that, that other that whole gang, no problem with them. Uh, you got to watch some of some of these things. You just can't make this stuff up. CNN was in the news. The Clinton News Network. They've got April Ryan, long been one of CNN's most vir virulent Trump haters, upped her game yesterday after White House spokesperson Sarah Sanders was barraged with questions about Ch Chief of Staff John Kelly's comments regarding the Civil War. Ryan wants to know, is slavery wrong? Does this administration think that slavery was wrong, is the question from April Ryan. What an idiot. The issue here is, is not whether slavery was wrong. The issue is, are we changing our history? Now you see, George Washington, he's the one that, father of the country, he owns slaves. Ironically enough, a white, peop white people owned slaves. Black people owned slaves. Amazing how we can't get that through our head, that that was part of our history. Now, is everything that we did throughout time, is everything that we did throughout our history all perfect? No. But I'm sure that, that 50 years or 100 years from now, there's going to be people, hopefully our country's still around, there's going to be people laughing, looking back at people like April Ryan and Adam Schiff and saying, what the heck were they thinking about? They'll probably you know, want to erase them from history. Just a thought right there. Maybe, maybe that won't be a bad idea. Uh, Hope Hicks in the news as well, involved with the Trump campaign, is now communications director. Now, wait a second. Hope Hicks, Sarah Sanders. Uh, how can there be this many women in, in a, an administration that is anti-woman? Just got. I just thought I'd throw that out there and see what your thoughts were. A uh, liberal group called Latino Victory Fund created an ad that may have set a new low in fear-mongering. It shows minority children running in fear from a murderous madman driving a truck with a Confederate flag and a Gillespie bumper sticker. Republican Ed Gillespie is running against Democrat Ralph Northam to be the next governor of Virginia. Soon after the terror attack in New York City, the Latino Victory Fund pulled its despicable ad off air. Maybe they can do the same thing here in Southern California with that stupid ad from Tom Steyer. I mean, I like the idea that he wastes his money. I'm not sure that I'd want to be in his hedge fund, being that I see how uh, what a great steward he is of his own money. Uh, amazing. And we're looking, waiting for the tax bill to come out. Unbelievable. Uh, the tax bill has been put on hold until tomorrow. Now in Taxifornia, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, all the states that are worried about this one for one simple reason. Mo money, mo money, mo money. They're going to take mo money from everybody in those states. That would be California, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, because we keep electing people that want to waste our money, tax us too much. So when they remove the state and local taxes from as a deduction going forward on the new tax proposal, it's one of the items being discussed, getting rid of that state and local deduction. So if that happens, think about this concept. Those states that want to tax you more, and, and you wonder, I was listening this morning to Peter King in New York talking about how much extra New York gives beyond what they get back from the federal government. 
So let's think about this. Maybe that's because people don't want to live in New York. Maybe a lot of people can't afford to live in New York because of the high taxes. You even look at somebody, ironically enough, and you know whether you like him or not, the, the funniest one, Rush Limbaugh. Right, He moved his production company to Florida. He says he won't go to New York because every time he goes to New York, that means he has to pay New York taxes. So as a high-income individual, he's moved out of the state because of their tax policy. But nobody wants to talk about that part of it. Congressman King, just a thought for you. Maybe if you can get Albany, this had, this, the state capital of New York, to lower taxes. I know you've got as much chance of that as we do here in Taxifornia. But if you can get them to lower taxes, maybe you won't have the issue. Maybe you won't say that, you know something? Even though the people of New York decided they wanted to pay more in taxes, just like the people of California... People of California want high taxes. If it wasn't, you know, the only way I know that people of California want high taxes is because they vote for people that are going to tax them more. If they didn't want high taxes, they would vote for the people that say, you know something, I'm going to lower your taxes. Think about that concept. They wouldn't impose a 12 cent per gallon gas tax on everybody. Now, that's only again, that, think about this one, a 12 cent a gallon gas tax. Who does that hurt the most? The working people. It doesn't hurt the guy that has a Tesla, right? Because he doesn't buy gasoline. It doesn't hurt the guy that's bought the hybrid Escalade because he's got a hybrid there. He's not paying, buying as much gasoline. The person that has the late model car that's a, a fuel efficient car doesn't affect them either. So it's a person that can't afford a car that, that's working from paycheck to paycheck. They're the person that's getting hurt by the policies of the, the, the people that are being elected in California. Think about that concept. Taxifornia. Love to pay high taxes. I know it because otherwise you wouldn't keep voting for these people. Just a thought. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. When we come back, how would you like to retire on $18,000 a month with no 401k, no IRA, no SEP? There's an easy way to do it. You just have to start a little early and make a plan. Also, the most livable cities in the U.S. Thinking about buying, you better know your credit score. And how much do financial advisors make? Is that a good thing or not? We'll talk about all that and more. Remember, you can reach us anytime. Our off-air number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio. On Twitter, at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1. Ron Siegel, the numeral 1, on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Did you know that banks and credit bureaus are rewarded financially if you have bad credit, and the worse your credit score is, the more money they can make off of you? How does that make you feel, knowing that banks are getting rich off of your hard-earned money? How does it make you feel, knowing that if a bank or a credit bureau makes a mistake on your credit report, they benefit from it and it hurts you? The Fair Credit Report Act of 1971 requires banks and credit bureaus to report only accurate information, and nearly 100% of all credit reports are inaccurate. If you're sick and tired of being broke and tired of being robbed by the banks, you owe it to yourself and to your family to call Rondi. Rondi is a FICO-certified credit professional and has helped thousands of people just like you get out of debt and establish great credit. 
Rondi's number is 855-608-1990. Again, that's 855-608-1990. Or visit creditsanitizer.com. Again, that website is creditsanitizer.com. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037, and DRE number 01869452. Are you a veteran, police officer, firefighter, doctor, nurse, or teacher? If so, you qualify as one of Ron Siegel's VIP heroes, and we have rewards up to $5,000 or $10,000 when you buy, sell, or refinance a home with one of the Ron Siegel Radio Partners. As one of the heroes, real estate agents will rebate part of their commission, lending partners will give a credit at closing, the title company has special published rates, and many other service providers have incentives too. All you need to do is call Ron Siegel Radio at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit VIPHeroProgram.com. Just think about what you will do with all the rebates and incentives from the partners of Ron Siegel Radio. Just call us at 800-306-1990 so we can show you our appreciation for your service. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message, and as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime. At 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. In the Your Credit Matters segment today, being brought to you by CreditSanitizer.com. You have a credit report. It is wrong. What are you doing about it? Credit Sanitizer has these solutions for you. All you need to do is go to the website, register on there. You're going to get some free updates once a week or so. Just on some ideas how to help you increase, improve your credit scores. And if you want, if it's prudent for you, I can put you in touch with Alan Hayon. He takes care of handling, working with the people of Ron, the, the, the listeners to Ron Siegel Radio. He'll take care of helping with credit repair, making sure your credit report is accurate. That's the most important part. We want to make sure that your credit report is accurate. And I know that it's not. I mean, it's not a, it's not a real big question mark there because nobody's reports. The reports just are never accurate. I've, I've lit, been looking at them for decades and I've never found a credit report that is completely accurate. It's just the way it is. So if you need that help from Alan, what about student loan consolidation, student loan plans? Alan has the answers for that one also. But if you're thinking about buying a house, maybe a car, you need to know your credit score. Knowing your credit score or getting a recent copy of your credit report is one of the first steps that you can take toward knowing how ready you are to start the home buying process. Make sure all the information listed on your report is accurate and work to correct any mistakes. The higher your credit score, the more likely you will be to receive a better interest rate for your mortgage, which will translate into more home for your money. That means you get more purchasing power. Many potential buyers believe that they need a 750 FICO score. And we've talked about this before. You need a 750 FICO score or higher to be able to purchase a home. The truth is that according to Ellie May's origination report, over 53% of loans were approved with a FICO score under 750 last month. Under 750 last month. So here are some tips for improving your credit score. Make payments, including rent, credit cards, and car loans on time. Keep your spending to no more than 30% of your limit on your credit cards. Pay down high balance credit cards to lower balances and consider balance transfers to free up credit. Check for errors on your credit report and work toward fixing them. 
Shop for mortgage rates within a 30-day period. Too many spread out inquiries can lower your score. Work with a credit counselor or a lender to improve your score. And once you know your score, your next step will be finding a lender and getting that fast pass loan approval that we talked about yesterday for a mortgage. Doing this will ensure that you know your budget before you start looking for your dream home. Now, those are just a few of the items. Now, remember the the concept here. Credit cards, you're paying those twice a month, every month. Once as much as possible, right before the statement closing date. means you got to go online, find out what your balance is right before the statement closing date, and pay that balance as much as you can. The other time that you're going to do it is right before the payment due date. Just make a minimum payment then. That should be set up as a regular So if you have a credit card that you're using on a regular basis and you know that you're always spending money on it, just go in there and set it up so $50 a month. So it goes right, it gets there the day before that payment due date every single month. And that way you never have to worry about missing a payment because you've always made it. Pretty simple stuff. Now the other part of it is you want to make sure you're watching your credit That would be EquifaxSecurity2017.com, EquifaxSecurity2017.com. So we're dealing with both of those items in the Your Credit Matters segment, again, brought to you by CreditSanitizer.com. So I chat about this every once in a while. We get into this this conversation, and I have people that, that look at the idea of retirement, and they say, well, Ron, you know something I've got? I understand what you're saying, and, and I want to pay off my house. And I just look at them and marvel, because right now you can get a loan. 3.94% is the 30-year fixed-rate loan, according to Freddie Mac. Now, do you qualify for that? I don't know. Now, I'm not giving you all the fancy, the compliance lingo, the APRs and all that stuff. Because it's Freddie Mac's public number. It's not your number. It's just a public number provided by Freddie Mac. So we don't have to worry about any compliance issues. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get anybody else in trouble. But at 3.94 on a Freddie Mac, I I keep looking at my notes to make sure I get the right number. 3.94 average paying a half a point on a Freddie Mac mortgage. Well, if that's the case... What can you make and what can you do with your money otherwise? And is, a, is your home equity, is that the investment you want? Now, a lot of people look at it and say, well, Ron, I want to pay off my house. And I say, if you're in Knoxville, Tennessee, that might make sense when you have an $80,000 price on a house or, or a $100,000 house price. When you're in Southern California, when you're investing and you've got tied up a half a million dollars in many instances, median price, I think right now in Orange County, California, and I'll tell it to you exactly so nobody gets upset with me, but the median home price in Orange County, California right now per square foot median home price. And for the last 42 years, on average, it's gone up 4.99% every single year. 4.99%. So let's think about these things. Do you want to have all that money tied up and doing absolutely nothing for you? Does that make any sense to you? Now, let's think about investments. I'm going to talk to you in a little bit about financial advisors, but let's think a little bit about investments and what makes sense and what does not make sense when you're doing some investing. And and we're going to close today, so make sure you don't go away. I'm going to show you exact numbers of a client that has has been, we've been looking at this philosophy, working this, this process with them. And we're on our way. We have, it's, it's a long-term process. But let's think about investment characteristics and consider how much you want in an investment with the following characteristics. You've got to listen to all these characteristics. There's about 10 of them. I don't want to bore you. You determine the amount of monthly contributions and length of time for each of the contributions to continue. Pretty basic. You, you determine the monthly amount and the length of time. You can pay more than the minimum monthly contribution, but you cannot pay less. Always have to make that monthly minimum. If you attempt to pay less, the financial institution keeps all the previous contributions. The money in the account is not liquid. The money deposited in the account is not safe from loss of principal. So you can put $100 in and you may not get everything back. You may not get anything back. It's not protected. 
So think about that part of it as well. Each contribution made to the account results in less safety of principal. The money deposited in the account earns 0% rate of return. Your income tax liability increases with each new contribution. So you get to pay more taxes every time you put more money into this investment. And when the plan is fully paid or fully funded, there is no income paid out to the investor. So you keep making all these payments all this time, and when you've made all your payments, so everything that you've agreed to, you get nothing in income paid out to you at that time. Is that the investment that you want? Now let's think about the, the flip side, the opposite, the side that I think makes more sense, because I don't like that invest. I don't like that idea. I don't like it when my money's less safe, not liquid, higher taxes, and no income paid out. So let's think about other options. Is it liquid? I want, I want an investment that I can get up my money. Is it safe, guaranteed, or insured? What rate of return can I likely get? I like a historic rate of return of about 8. Does that mean it's going to be that going forward? No. This year it's probably about 17, but historically you can't say what's going to happen. You can only say what has happened. So historically over a 30-year process, about 8% return. And I like something that's got tax benefits associated to it. So maybe I can put money in. Maybe it's after-tax money, which say after-tax money of $100 and you're in a 30% tax bracket, so the tax on that is $30. If it grows to $1,000, still in the 30% tax bracket, that's now $300. So let's think about this. Would you rather pay $30 today or $300 later? Hmm. Or what, would, what about a better concept? What if you can pay $30 today, nothing later? Do you, like, you like that idea? Interesting. So here's the concept of why I like the tax benefits. Those, the, the, the money can grow over time with no taxes. Think about some of these concepts here. The investment characteristics I just shared with you. And then we're going to get down to some real hard and fast numbers when we come back. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets when we come back. The li most livable cities in the U.S. We'll talk about it. We're going to also talk about how much do financial advisors make. All that and more. You can reach us anytime. Off air number 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio on Twitter, at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1, Ron Siegel, the numeral 1 on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Siegel Lending Team offers you buying power. Siegel Lending Team offers you buying power. Let's say you can afford a monthly mortgage payment, including principal and interest, of around $1,900. With today's rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage of 3.75%, APR 3.85%, that payment could support a $416,000 mortgage. But if you wait and rates tick up to around 6.5%, which is roughly the average home mortgage rate over the past 30 years, that same $1,900 mortgage payment, including principal and interest, may only be able to support a $314,000 mortgage. That's over $100,000 worth of home you're you're missing out on by waiting. That's buying power. All you need to do to get started is reach out to the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Payment example excludes taxes and insurance. Call us for full details, 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or SiegelLendingTeam.com. Equal housing lender, licensed under NMLS number 217037. Are you purchasing or own a luxury home? If you're like so many others, your home is your largest asset and the mortgage is your largest debt. The Siegel Lending Team has some amazing financing opportunities right now. Jumbo loans up to $2 million, 30-year rates below 4%, 15-year rates near 35 and if you can believe it, 7-year interest only hybrids in low threes. The Siegel Lending Team has all the options for your jumbo or second home loan requirements. 
Take advantage of them while you can. To learn more about all the other financing products available from the Siegel Lending Team, call 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Again, call 1-800-306-1990. Rates subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal Housing Lender. Homeowners that are 62 and older are about to find out a great way to live a better retirement. It's called a reverse mortgage, and SLT can help you learn more. Call the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990 right now to receive your free booklet with no obligation. It answers questions like how a reverse mortgage works, how much do you qualify for, the ways to receive your money, and more. When you call the experts at Siegel Lending Team today, you'll learn the benefits of a government-insured reverse mortgage, how it will eliminate your monthly mortgage payments, and give you tax-free cash from the equity in your home. Here's the best part. You still own your home. Now is the best time to take control of your retirement. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990 to get your free brochure. Call today or visit our website at SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or simply call 800-306-1990. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message, and as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. In the real-time real estate segment today, being brought to you by the area-trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio, text NEST, N-E-S-T, to 79564, find your dream home. Before someone else does, love the idea of nest. Just because you put in the parameters that you want. You put in there how many bedrooms, bathrooms, the location, the pricing. And you're going to get a text message every time something meets your criteria. Every time that comes online, comes on the market. Love that concept. Then if you just call and tell our team at Ron Siegel Radio... Text NEST at ronsegalradio.com, NEST at ronsegalradio.com. You can put your address in after you've, after you've set up your NEST account. Just get, let us know what your current address is. And every time a property sells in your neighborhood, you'll get a text message telling you what the property values are, what the property sold for on that property that just sold in your neighborhood. Most livable cities in the U.S. 2017 edition. And what makes a city a great place to live? You'll probably get a different answer from every person you ask. But there are some factors that the majority of people would agree makes a city livable. For example, you probably want your city to be affordable, to have access to jobs, and to be safe. So let's rank out some of these cities based on a cost of living and economic indicators and more. If you're looking to buy a home... You really need to look and do some research, figure out where you want to be in order to find the most livable cities in America. There's six metrics that are used. We looked at unemployment, the unemployment rates, income after housing costs, population density, property and violent crime rates, and walkability. And I'm going to share with you some of the findings. Mid-sized cities analyze the largest 100 cities in the U.S. So all the cities in the data set are pretty big, but the relatively mid-sized cities tended to rank higher. Largest city to crack the top 10 was Honolulu, which has the 55th largest population. Midwest is not best. Madison is a great spot and made the top 10 list, but five of the bottom 15 cities are also in the Midwest. Ohio particularly struggled in the study with Cleveland, Toledo, and Cincinnati all in the bottom 15. What's number one? Arlington, Virginia is the most livable city in the United States in 2017. In order to live comfortably in any city, you will need a steady income stream. Arlington offers its residents just that. Unemployment rate is 2.8% plus paying for housing costs, after paying for housing costs. The average resident will have about $40,000 in income. 
Arlington, Virginia. That's right outside of Washington, D.C. So you have, once you get a job there, you never lose it, and you make a lot of money. Fremont, California jumped up seven spots from last year's ranking to be the second most livable city in the country. If you're looking for a safe place to live, Fremont is a great option. city has top ten scores in both property, crime rate, and violent crime rate. But Fremont is more than a safe place to live. It offers residents plenty of access to opportunity. The average resident here has about $23,700 after paying for housing. It scores in the top five for that metric. Plus, only 3.2% of the residents are unemployed. The downside to living in Fremont is you'll likely need a car to get around. The city has the lowest population density in the top 10 and walkability score of only 44. Plano, Texas, second consecutive year. Plano ranked third. Texas City is an economic juggernaut in the top 10. Residents earn $45,000 on average and median housing costs $17,000 per year. An interesting number. This means the average Plano resident has about $28,000 after housing. In the continuing, Jersey City, Irvine, California made the list. Chandler, Arizona, Honolulu's number seven. Irving, Texas, number eight. Madison, Wisconsin, number nine. Scottsdale, Arizona, number ten. That is the most livable cities in America, according to this report and the methodology I just shared with you. So we've been talking this morning about how you can retire on $18,000 a month with no 401k, no IRA, no SEP, none of those things. And I shared with you the ideas before about the investment characteristics. Now let's talk about how we do this, how it works. And I used some pretty basic numbers, so we have to talk a little bit about the basic numbers. And I shared with you, Orange County, California has a 4.99% appreciation rate for the last 42 years, 4.99. So we can probably use a safe, some safe numbers in there. I like to be a pretty simple guy here. But I just I, I ran that number with a let's just use an eighteen uh, four point nine nine so I just put that in the value in the appreciation column and this actually happened we had a, a listener call us and we ran this scenario for them we used and I shared with you that we get an eight percent annual return on the investment vehicle over the last thirty years cannot guarantee it going forward. And I'm not selling investment vehicles, so I'm not even going to tell you what the vehicle is. But I will tell you where to get it. Okay, so, but I used a 7.2% appreciation. Why do we use 7.2? Because it's easy. And I'm a simple guy. So the rule of 72 says every time you divide something, you need to take an interest rate divided by 72. That's how long it's going to take for your money or your whatever to double. So if we take... A, the rule of 72 says 72 divided by 7.2. That means our money is going to double here. Our investment money is going to double every 10 years. Does that make sense to you? So every 10 years, our money doubles at a 7.2% rate of return. Now, we're talking about 8%, so that's just to give you a little bit of a cushion there. Want to be a little conservative. So we took a property that had 630000 was valued at $630,000. And what we do with that is we, we said there was a mortgage there on that property and we were able to go and look and say, okay, well, what if we bring that mortgage balance up to 80% loan to value? So that means you're going to get a $504,000 mortgage. And in this particular listener, that meant that there was going to be $126,000 freed up from the property. $126,000 was being freed up from the property when they had a $630,000 property value and we brought the mortgage balance up to $504,000. Now, what ends up happening there is we took that one twenty six dollars and we put it in the investment vehicle and let that grow. And again, I told you we used a 7.2% appreciation. Now, over time... We look at it and it's going to continue growing, but five years out, we're looking and we're saying, okay, the property has appreciated to 
$803,000. Remember we talked about 4.99% appreciation. Average over 42 years. Now it may not happen every time, but when we get to 80% loan, when we get to a point where we can can pull more money out. So in this case, we waited five years, pull more money out. We were able to liberate by going to the same 80% loan to value. We were able to liberate $178,000. I'm sorry, 130 $178,000 we're able to liberate from this property. Put that in the investment vehicle. Add it to it. Pretty simple stuff, right? So we're going to... I did that wrong again. I'm sorry. That, that it's $138,000 is what we liberated. I'm just looking at where the numbers are right here. So we liberated $138,000 on this property. So when we liberate that, what do we do with it? We put that money into the investment vehicle. Keep putting more money into that investment vehicle. So while it's growing at 7.2% annually, we're also adding more to it because we're taking and liberating more money out of our real estate holdings. So now we continue doing that every five years. We continue liberating more money. So in year 10, hypothetically, if we keep getting that 4.99% appreciation, we liberate another 177000 In year 15, we liberate another 226000 And in year 20, it's another 288000 And you see how this keeps on growing? And where do we do with that money? We don't go buy a car. We don't go buy a boat. We don't go on vacation. We keep putting that money in to our investment vehicle that's growing at 7.2% hypothetically and over time that's going to just keep on growing. After 30 years the numbers become very staggering. After 20 years they're amazing. But we'll talk about it when we get back. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events and the financial markets. When we come back, the results of our plan and how much do financial advisors make? All that and more. You can reach us anytime off air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us. Facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio on Twitter at Ron Siegel. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Most businesses struggle to get the online reviews they need to get a competitive edge over their competition. Rex is a brand new technology that uses text messages to direct happy clients to your online review sites, Zillow, Google, Facebook, and Yelp, and unhappy clients to a private survey so businesses can win more customers. Try Rex today by going to www.meetrex.com. Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed rate loan below 4.25% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $295,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,400 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the current market? To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the Seagull Lend team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. 
Do you have a goal of mortgage-free home ownership? What if your home was valued at $500,000? Are you aware that a free and clear home could be costing you $2,500 every month, $30,000 per year? The mortgage planners at the Siegel Lending Team would like to show you how you can own your home, generate tax-free income, and accumulate family wealth. You simply need to call the Ron Siegel Team at 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. By sending the team a copy of your most recent mortgage statement, the team will send you a no obligation real estate plan. You be the judge if this is right for your family. Again, all you have to do is send the team a copy of your mortgage statement by email to reap at ronsiegelradio.com or call today, Ron Siegel, 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject change and without notice. Licensed by the California DOC and BRENMLS 2170037 and 145502 and CalBRE 01869452 and 1866 You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime. At 800-306-1990, In the Word on Wealth segment today, being brought to you by our friends at Gold Star Mortgage, the home, the only home of the Fast Pass loan approval. Gold Star Mortgage, they are the ones for you to chat with about getting that save ten to fifty thousand dollars. With the Fast Pass loan approval, how much do financial advisors make? And I guess I should uh, preface that there are good and bad in every industry. So I'm not saying whether it's right, wrong. But there are also statistics for everything. I don't have to share. I don't have to tell you that one. I'm sure you already know it. So how much do financial advisors make? Is the question of the day. And yeah, guidance, financial advisor, what, first off, what do they do? So financial advisor provides guidance on everything from monthly budgeting to investing in the stock market. Many financial advisors find it rewarding to help others take control of their finances, but that certainly doesn't mean they work for free. The average salary, average salary for a financial advisor, $90,530 in 2016, well above the national average. Job prospects in the field are also good with employment expected to grow by almost 30%. From 2014 to 2024, financial advisor provides financial advice to clients. Not all advisors have the same areas of expertise, but they all share the same goal of helping people to understand their finances and make the best financial decisions. The term financial advisor doesn't apply to just one profession. It's more of a blanket term that includes financial planners, insurance agents, stocks brokers, tax professionals, and even some bankers. The exact advice and services that a financial advisor offers can also vary. Services could span from budgeting and retirement planning to managing a client's investment portfolio. Most advisors choose to specialize in one area such as taxes, retirement, or estate planning. So if you're looking for financial help, Make sure to find a financial advisor that matches your needs and goals. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average salary for a financial advisor, as I said, $90,530. Well above the national average salary or average national salary, $37,040. Big difference, though, between the highest and lowest earning financial advisors. Fascinating. So how do they make their money? When it comes to pay, there are a few different ways that a financial advisor can earn money. Some financial advisors work on a commission. These advisors will make a set amount every time they sell a certain product or service. This includes selling certain insurance product or getting clients to buy a particular mutual fund. It is possible for conflicts of interest to arise with an advisor who works on commission. Less common for a financial advisor to earn their pay strictly off of commission if they are certified with some of the common financial advisor certifications. The certifications and licenses 
are independent of pay structure, but some require advisors to act in the best interest of their clients. These financial advisors will usually earn their money through fees or a salary instead. Fee-based advisors charge an upfront fee to their clients. They could also earn a commission. Fee-only advisors earn their pay strictly from fees they charge to clients, and they may charge a flat rate fee for their services, or they may charge clients at an hourly rate. A lot of differences in there, so you just need to do a little bit of homework to find out who it is, what you're looking for, who has the right services, and give me a call at 800 306 1990. I'd be more than happy to help you find a great financial advisor, financial planner that meets your unique goals and objectives. Every one of them is a little bit different. Now, the product that we've been talking about this morning. Al Manfrey is the go-to guy for this just because a lot of people have it. A lot of people don't know how to use it properly. And if you don't use it properly, you could end up with a big tax liability either immediately or down the road. So you want to make sure that you're dealing with it properly. Now here's the issue. I'll recap it real quick. If you want more of the specifics, you got to go back a little bit and look at what we were talking about earlier in the broadcast. But we looked at a property that had a $630,000 value. We were able to do a show them how to get a new mortgage of $504,000, which liberated $126,000 from their, from their equity. And every five years, we were doing the same thing, and they kept taking that money and putting it into the investment vehicle. And at the end of 30 years, that investment vehicle hypothetically grows to $4.4 million. $4.4 million. Now, you might say, well, Ron, yeah, but you've been taking a lot of mortgage money out of your properties. And if, yes, you're right. The mortgage now at year 30 is $1.7 million. Now, your net worth on this whole prop prospect is you've got a property that's got a value of 2.7 million. You've got a, uh, an investment account that is worth 4.4 million. You've got a mortgage of 1.7. So you add the neck, the property value less the mortgage, add the investment account, and you've got a net worth after 30 years of $5.4 million. And all you've done is done a refinance every five years and invest the money. Not to, then you don't do anything else at all with it. Just let it sit there and let it grow. Now, why would, you have to, why would you be willing to do that? Well, the biggest buildings in every city are quite simply owned by insurance companies. So why not let them do the investing for you? Do they make money on this? Absolutely. Well, there's no free lunch. We talked about that with buying cars yesterday. We, we, Joe Ingram was, was watching us, and he was sharing us with that same concept. He can't buy a car at retail and sell it at wholesale. Well, if you want a great financial advisor, you've got to pay him a little bit of money to do their job. So we've, we've got a net worth at this point, 30 years down the road, $5.4 million. Now, Remember I told you we're growing at 7.2% annually? That's after, after expenses. What if we take 5% annually after the 30 years? If we take 5% of that $5.4 million, well, now we've got $18,000 a month coming out of the account. $18,000 a month. Now, we're going to use a hypothetical number. And I told you that the Fannie Mae rate on a mortgage, 3.93% right now. Well, what if we take that $1.7 million mortgage that I was telling you we've accumulated 30 years out, and don't think it's outrageous to think about having a mortgage of $1.7 million 30 years from now. Ask your parents what their mortgage was when they first started 30 years ago. So that mortgage is $10,000 a month. Now we're earning... 18, 000, or, or, or getting a distribution of 18000 a month. That distribution, because we're, we're structured it properly, does not have taxes to come out of it. We don't have to worry about any tax liability. So we're going to take that $10,000 and make a payment. Now, after we account for taxes, because that 10000 is still tax deductible, and they're not talking about getting rid of the mortgage interest deduction right now, so we've got an $11,000 net distribution. So we take our 18000 
less the net of 10,000 net of taxes because we got to deduct our, our tax benefit there. And we got $11,500 net after we pay our mortgage. Can you live off of that? And it's going to grow. Continues to grow. We haven't even touched the principal that's sitting there of $4.4 million. Think about that. Now, what if you just say, well, Ron, I just want to pay off that mortgage. Do it. Not a problem. You're still going to have $11.1 million as your net. So you only lose about $300 a month by paying off the mortgage. What do you think about that concept? Does that make sense? Have you followed along with all of that? If you haven't got all that detail down, give me a call at 800-306-1990. Be more than happy to share with you all those numbers, where they all come from, and how it works for you. We can put your scenario, your specific, your unique scenario into the data. Because everyone's a little bit different. Not everybody has a $630,000 property. Not everybody's in Orange County. Not everybody has $126,000 that they can liberate out of their property, although more people have it than don't have it right now. Look at our social media page. We just shared some numbers earlier today with how many people have significant amounts of equity, significantly more than what they ever thought that they had. It's all right there. It's all coming out of, out of the statistics from our government. Just a thought for you, and remember... Set that first radio preset button to come back here every day to join Ron Siegel Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to John, who's engineering us today. And, of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions or meet any of our guests, call me anytime, 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com. And remember, make a lot of money, help a lot of people, have a lot of fun, have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio. <laughs>